uh, like I said, welcome from Alcalan Public or welcome to Alcalan Public Schools. The ERLC is thrilled that they've agreed to share what they've been up to in their classrooms because so often we bring in speakers, but what we really love to hear is from teachers who are actually doing it in their classrooms. So I'm going to let Elk Island teachers introduce themselves as they go, but I know that we have a lovely list of folks who have gathered together this afternoon. So I'm gonna turn it right over. Dana, are you the first one up? Yes, I am. All right, Dana, take it away. And I teach a one two combined class at Fair Elk Island. Um, one of the things I found over a single year was that I was trying to revamp and change my spelling units every single year. I was remaking it and trying to find a better way to teach spelling to my kiddos. And I've been teaching combined classes for a few years now. And when we were introduced to Words Their Way, I thought, well, I think I'm going to give that a try. It's a really good way to kind of target all the needs in my class. With the combined class, I have a unique set of challenges having two grades. And um, with both of them, I actually, at the beginning of the year, had 12 different groups that were practicing different sets of spelling words. Um, so that was a bit overwhelming in the beginning. But because I use daily five as a, um, a structure in my classroom, I decided to try and incorporate that as best I could into the structure that I was already using. So if you look um, at these bookmarks, this is what I used to organize myself at the beginning of the year with my kids. What I did is I took out uh, Read to Friend and Listen to Reading, and we actually did those at a different point during the day. Uh, and I combined that with when I was doing guided reading with my class, with my students. So I made uh, word sort by myself and word sort with a partner as two separate centers during my morning. Uh, the reason why I did this is because I wanted to give my students a chance to really practice those skills before I put it into just one center, especially since my kids in my class were so young at the time. I had five, six, and seven-year-olds in my class. So with word sort by myself, that was really a time for them to uh, practice their sorts, make sure they were able to put their words into the proper categories. This is also a time when they would, uh, I gave them ABC order pages and rainbow writing pages to practice writing those words that they were sorting. And then the word sort with partner center is when they would actually play the word sort games and activities with a partner who was doing the same word sort as they were. Once they got the hang of working through those two centers, is when I combined it into the regular word work center into my daily five, and we were able to move on to the choice of daily five as well. So looking at the screen, you can see that my kids all are assigned numbers, and they just move their numbers to whatever center they're choosing to work on. And when we started this, like I said, the word sort with a friend and word sort by myself were two separate centers. And as we move through the year, I was able to put it into just word work. So when it was just in word work, they knew that they had to do both of those words work by myself and they had to do it with a partner as well. It became a little bit more challenging when I started doing it this way because I had so many different levels and so many different sorts that kids were doing. But they seemed to really enjoy practicing each other's sorts sometimes as well. So I kind of have let them do that. It's good practice. As the year has gone on, though, the gap of levels has gone down significantly. I started with 12. Now I only have five. So that's made my life a lot easier. One of the reasons why I love Words Their Way so much is because I was finding with any spelling program that I was using is that my students weren't transferring the information from their spelling test into their reading or their writing. So they were getting it right on the spelling test because they practiced it at home the night before, but they weren't necessarily spelling those words correctly when we were doing our writing on a daily basis. And they weren't, if they knew how to spell it, it was odd to me that they weren't reading the word correctly either during reading time. So using Words Their Way has really helped my kids transfer that knowledge and that information. And I've seen a huge improvement in all of my students and how they're spelling. And it's given me a unique opportunity to be able to target exactly what skills they are missing. A lot of my kids were missing diagraphs in their spelling. And one of the hardest ones was the DR and the TR. So we spent a lot of time in the class working on that. 
Uh, I know one of the biggest challenges of Birds Their Way is knowing, figuring out how to teach each different group uh, their word sort. So what I would do is every Monday during Daily Five was all about writing about your weekend during work on writing. And that was something they got very used to doing and they got very independent at it. So I was able to meet with all of my students at their word work and word sort centers and target them and be able to teach them the lesson and what they needed to be doing for the week. Uh, we typically spend in my class two weeks on a word sort. And then at the end of every month is when I would go ahead and give them a little uh, spelling inventory or a quiz on their spelling to see where they're at and if they were ready to move on to the next sort. Uh, it's been a really great experience for me. My kids really love it. It's hands-on. Adding it into my daily five has made a world of difference for me, but making sure that you organize it at the beginning of the year and tracking kind of where your kids are and what sorts they've done so they're not repeating them too often is really important. So, yeah, that's been my experience with Earth Fair Day in our one, two, combined class. I'll pass it on. Hi, I'm Jarlene. I teach a grade two class. Um, when Word Brew Way first, when I first heard about it, um, I guess the biggest thing for me was organization. So when I looked at all the books and all the different sorts that you know, I'd, I'd have to be preparing on a Monday morning, that sort of thing, for me, I looked at efficiency. And so what I decided to do was each day of the week, it's going to say Monday, there are Mondays at the back. So it starts Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Monday. So each, after the spelling test, each student got, did I decide where they were going to begin? And I put their name, you'll see in the picture, on the clip, and that's where they begin. So you can see in the first, the short vowel, all those kiddos will be working on short vowels with me. So how I organize it is the first 15 minutes while my grade twos are doing their calendar books independently, the students that are working with me come to the horseshoe table. They begin with their word sort, and then they go from there. So, for example, today we did some making words of short oats. So I brought in the making word tiles, and we made some more short old words. So I use many more different activities, and I move them on when I feel they are ready. So the students know, too, by because they look at this, they know what sort they're working on. and I moved them accordingly. So I had a couple of kiddos today that um, understood short O, so I moved them, I moved them to the next sort. There was a couple other kiddos in that group that had some problems still, so we, we, we stayed on that one. Um, so you know that the color photos are to do with what, um, like if they're working on short vowels, constant diagrams, depending on what they work on. This is, this is all the sorts for the entire book and I keep it in my classroom and it works fantastic. There's about 10 copies of each sort. And as I go, I put in the extra worksheets or extra activities that I find. I put that in the file folder so it's ready to go for the next week. So it's worked great for me. It's quick. I pull it out in the mornings and I can begin. The one group is six students. That's my max size of group. I find that's a good, you know, sit around your horseshoe table and work with them. So that's how I organize it. The students then can take their word work or their words or way book and work on it during our daily five. So they have the activities they can do, they can sort the words, or they can do some other activities that kind of go with it. Um, so that's the way I organize the, and then this is my organization of the week. So I record my students, uh, their notes, how they're doing, and you can see kind of when they're zooming in, you know, they scribble, they're scratches. This is true what I did. And uh, I, I can see who's ready to move on to the next sort, who is going to continue with that sort. And yeah, we go from there. So I have 10 IMPs, so I find this works excellent to get all my kiddos in the classroom. And they're, they're working where they're at. Yeah, um, basically, yeah, it creates clips and just I all organize them. That's all I think I have for organization. And I think I added a blank one in just to know what's next. I know that. My name is Kylie. I teach grade four, and this is my first year teaching grade four. I taught grade two for 13 years. 
stories in transition. I have been getting out for their feet. I have been you know, making and breaking words and certain transfer during my work, work in grade two. And I know I, I was going to write something out for this grade four year. So I love words their way because of the differentiation that is built into the program. Um, I'll show you a little bit of my class with Down syndrome. Who is working on the first book, Better Than Picture Sorts for Emergent Spellers. So, as you can see, he's working here on initial confidence and uh, he does picture sorts. And these sorts are independent sorts, so he's able to sort these words uh, by himself by the end of the week. Uh, he actually glues them down in his book by Friday, so this would be his test. He does speed sorts with his aid and partner sorts with a, a fellow classmate. So this is, would be my lowest level. Uh, within this book, you'll have poetry and music like blah, 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 sheep for the B, uh, the pain it's pouring for the R. So I incorporated music uh, during his music time. Uh, we would pull up the mind or um, songs during uh, music in the classroom. And he would keep a friend back from his regular class and even rhythmical instrument and movement. He would have a good time learning these, uh, these songs and poems along with the initial consonant sounds. Uh, this, uh, let's see, after the end of this is chapter six. So the next slide will show you what he is doing now after spring break. He moves into a concept, concept of word imprint. So here we have um, shared reading activities. Uh, and writing activities, word study, and uh, chronological learning activities. The first selection here is called Rain on Green Grass. So the concept first he had to understand is there's a picture sort for wet and dry. So he was learning what's wet, what's dry. And then cutting up sentence strips to go along with the poem. Um, finding uh, some of his sight words that we had worked on earlier in the year. Adding some of these words to his independent uh, word wall. That's the word on is already on his word wall. Um, the color words are on his word wall. And then um, just that is what he does. He stores, um, you can see these words are stored in his bank as well throughout the week. So that's where he is now. Then moving up to my highest level, he's really working on at a grade five level. Um, this is a word source for derivational spellers. Dorothy, how do you say that, Heather? Derivational spellers. <laughs> so this is sort number five in the last book. Whereas Christian was sort number five, he just or sort of chapter six in the first book. So there's quite a spectrum of learners in my classroom. So Joe, this boy, sorry, was working on suffixes. So he is looking at base words. And adding uh, I O N to his base words. And uh, the next book would be um, adding I A N to base words. So you can see just a huge difference in what they're working on. But they're working on this activity at the same time every day for the first 10 minutes of our daily five time. So I, I really enjoy the program. I think it's working very well for me and for my students. And uh, I usually take a lesson over two weeks. And uh, a copy of the lesson also goes home with the students on the first day. So the parents know their child's words for the week. That's important. And uh, the test, when it does occur on a Friday, um, you don't necessarily have to test all the words. So that's something that I learned probably midway through this pilot program was that half the words would suffice. And understanding if the child you know, understood the concept or not. So, and I think that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. All right, so my name is Sarah, and I teach grade five. I have a little bit of a different perspective as a first year teacher. So I don't really have much to relate to, but I found it very successful in my classroom. So for assessments, I use a few different formats. There are spell checks directly in the books, but I find it hard to integrate them as you have all of your groups at different levels at the same time. 
um, not all groups are coming to those provided assessments at the same time, so I choose to do a site variation on a standard cell jet. So the main assessment I use is on the screen, and I either provide them with an X or get them to draw an X on a piece of paper, and it works for all groups regardless of their level. In the section with the X, they write down their headers, so if they don't remember their headers, I provide them with those because I want to test their ability to sort the words, not their ability to memorize the headers. Um, for each group, I give them five words. So I take five words directly from their sort. So as we said, we don't have to assess every single word from the sort. And then for the sixth word, I allow the students to add an additional word that wasn't part of their sort, but it fits their sorting rule. So it allows me to see if the students understand the sorting rule and if they can apply their knowledge to a new situation. So kind of going above and beyond, and are they truly understanding their sorting rule? Um, sometimes I do this spelling assessment of the whole class. Um, so I use fruit the names for my groups. So I would do okay, peaches, your first word is happy, and then I would move on to the next group. So oranges, your first word is slice, and then I go through all of the groups, then coming back to the second word for each of the groups. And I just find that it gives kids a chance to think about the word they're spelling, and it gives them a little bit of processing time for some of the kids that need a little bit longer to think about it. So sometimes that works for them. I've also done it where I do these at the beginning of my conferences. So when I pull a group aside, I sometimes do the assessment right at the start before we start the newest um, word sort for that week. So I would still give them the same format there, give them the X, and then after that, we would then move on to the newest sort. Can we actually just have to move closer to the mic? So we have everybody in the rest of the night. I'm just having a hard time hearing, but it is a real echo. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when I mark these assessments, I give one mark for the word being spelled correctly and one mark if it's under the right header. So then the other form of assessment that I use is a gluten sort. So often I'll use this as a formative assessment because um, it does take quite a bit of time. So for some students, it's not an effective assessment because they can't get it done in a reasonable amount of time. And it's not fair to assess them on it if they haven't had the chance to finish it. Um, so students take out their words for that week. They sort them first and then they glue. I find that having them sort them first and then glue them, just, um, it saves a little bit of time rather than gluing as they go. Uh, for early finishers, because there's some kids that finish right away, I let them do word hunts and look for new words in the books that they're reading, and they're daily, we do daily three, and so they look for new words and add them to their columns. So even if there are those students that take a little bit longer to do their sorts, uh, the ones that are done really have something to do. In terms of assessing each group, it is fairly straightforward, and there's many ways that you can assess. Um, but for me, this year I have 29 students, and so this is two of the ways it's been most effective for me um, in order to be able to assess them at their level. Yes, they can, but they'd like us to do that. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Chrissy McCory. I teach grade six, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can actually start getting this set up in your own classroom. So hopefully you're a little bit familiar with selling inventory that's provided from their way. If you're not, it's basically just a traditional spelling test that you give them between 20 and 25 words, and then you correct it, except it's not just whether the word is right or wrong, it's where you start to determine where their deficiencies in spelling are and whether it's sounds or patterns. And so I'll show you maybe. Okay, so here's a spelling inventory that I did in September with my class. And so you can't tell here whether the word was right or wrong. You're looking at the different elements that were in the words and where the mistakes were. And so the purple that I highlighted is showing the areas where they had more than two uh, errors in that category. So that tells us where they're starting to have trouble with different elements of spelling. And so from there, this is where you would actually start to group your students based on the areas that they, they need to work on. 
Um, so depending on how they do on their spelling inventory, if they have more than 20 words um, correct, you're going to give them a higher level for the upper elementary spelling inventory, just because that gives them more challenging words. You're still looking for the same elements, like blending, um, different vowel sounds, that kind of thing, but in a more difficult words, so you're able to see if they can apply it on a higher level. If they have less than 20, that you stop with that inventory, and then you just analyze their errors, like I did um, on this image. So the inventory is basically just a diagnostic tool that's going to help guide your practice and help you as you form groups. Um, I guess it's very important to keep in mind that these groups can be flexible. So if you notice, um, it's hard to point out here one, but the, the very top student had two, two areas that were low in a row, but then they had three that were okay. So I wouldn't necessarily keep them going in order in those sorts. I might give them those two mini lessons on the earlier errors and then not give them the next three and put them up into another group later on with people that have the same areas of need. Um, so you can have as many groups as you want or you're comfortable with. I right now have six and it's pretty manageable. Um, I do have EA support that, that um, helps me with that, but um, last, last term I had seven groups, I believe, and it, it's not too bad, but if you'd rather have larger groups, then it's just kind of whatever works for you. Um, I would suggest at least doing this inventory in September and in June, but we do it every term so that we can start to reflect on how they're progressing as we report on these things for um, report cards. And then just in terms of growth, so this is the inventory in September. And then this was the progress um, in March when I did it. So down the bottom, I've tallied how many students were missing that skill. Um, and then this red is how many changed. So there were six fewer students having the first skill missing and then five fewer students. So it just gave me a good indication that this program is actually working. So I'll flip back between those because you can see how much purple there is here and how much less there is, in, especially in these middle rows. So it really shows the progress there. Um, the weekly sorts and assessments really allow you to determine um, how they're doing. So you're checking in frequently and you're able to, like Sarah says, find out if they're able to apply these skills to new words. So that's something, especially in grade six that we're looking for. We don't want them to just kind of regurgitate what we've given them. We want to see them using it in new ways. And like the other lady said, we encourage them to do that through word hunts during daily, we do daily three. During daily three, and then I'm going to pass it on to Sheila. Slide that way. Uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, so, hi, I'm Sheila Story. I teach grade six as well as Sissy. So, once we finished uh, organizing our students into groups, we needed to figure out how we were actually going to implement this in a way that's classroom. So, I, I think it's easy to see how the way works uh, a little bit more smoothly perhaps with division one where you already might have a setup where you have um, stations uh, or activities like that. Whereas in grade six, we were um, not so sure at first how to approach that and how to uh, give the students time to work on their word sorts, but also have time to teach the word sorts. So we decided to implement a daily three sort of framework, uh, but we modified it for grade six, we call it daily, or sorry, it's called daily five, but we modified it, we call it daily three. Um, so I'll just ahead to the first slide and you can see uh, sort of how we organized ourselves, we organized our thinking. So uh, during our language arts periods, our periods are 31 minutes each, uh, we break it down into a mini lesson and then two blocks of daily three where the students have a choice of activity and we work in small groups or individually um, with some coaching. Uh, we have uh, at least two blocks of language arts every day, sometimes three blocks, so we can get through uh, several sessions of daily three with the students. So this is the way we sort of organize our thinking from the teacher side of things. Uh, our school has a five-day rotation system, but this would work the same if you had a Monday to Friday rotation system. So we decided to put our word work, uh, which is our word away, on day one, and then 
Uh, so on day one, our moving us into the whole class would relate to the word sorts in some way. So we'd be teaching them a new word sorts, or getting them to do a word sorts, or reminding them to practice their word sorts, whatever we felt they needed to focus on. And then on day two and three, our mini lesson would be about uh, writing, specifically using the writer's workshop program. And then day four and five, so we focus on reading strategies. Um, that's just with our mini lesson. And then uh, during our conferencing time in the small groups or individually, that's where we're working with students, while the rest of the class is working independently on their chosen activities. So, for example, on day one, when it says word work focus, the students still have free choice of any of the three activities for any block of time. Um, but on day one, when we're doing our conferencing time, that's when we're teaching the new words. So, so as Chrissy said, um, we had sort of between five and seven different groups of students. Um, but we found with our two to three blocks of language arts uh, a day, and day ones we purposely find when we have three blocks of language arts, we were able to usually get through um, all of our word workers if we stuck to our time limit. And uh, we can get through teaching in a new sort so that they can take it home and practice it. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for them to cut out the words, especially when they're getting used to the program. So we get them to cut out the words before they come to the table. So we made it part of our morning routine. Um, they can even be cutting out words while listening to morning announcements. And then they have those words ready to go um, to come to the table and uh, learn the sort. Uh, we also have the students take home a set of the same words to practice at home. So they have a, home for a set for practicing at home and a set for practicing at school. So we're not worried about them forgetting them in the places. Um, in preparing for those lesson plans, knowing that we have to move through five to seven different groups of students, um, it's a lot to, as an individual, have your brain wrapped around teaching those different sorts. So what we did as a team, there was three of us implementing uh, work building and division two this year, so we sort of collaborated and worked together. And we, uh, broke down the lesson plans in a simpler format. So uh, on the left side here, you can see the lesson plan as it is written in the word theory of users. And then on the right, you can see an example of how we um, broke it down into a simpler format. So I'm um, taking the long paragraphs of description, breaking it down into just a few simple jot notes that you could follow as you're working with a group of students, um, which was really helpful as you're trying to get through several groups um, quickly. So this is a format that worked for us. Um, obviously, you can play around with it and see what works well for you. Um, and then, of course, uh, you can change things and adapt things as you need. So one thing we found was uh, we always do a novel study in grade six, and we wanted to be able to really focus on the novel study and make that our priority. So we put a daily three program and a word study program just on pause. Uh, for about a month, I think it took. Um, so every language arts class instead was focused on the novel study, and then when we finished the novel study, we picked up again with uh, words their way, and that worked really well. It was nice it was flexible like that. And then the same thing in term three, we started really focusing on our writing skills, especially being grade six, coming up to the writing PT. A lot more of our focus was on the writing, but we actually chose to continue with words their way uh, while we were doing that writing focus and sort of making ties between what they were learning and their word sort with uh, the writing that we wanted. So I think now we're going to open it up to any questions from the chat. This is just one question in the Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for pre-cutting skirts, uh, I never did that with my kiddos. I know at the beginning of the year it was a little bit painful because it took them so long to do it. But as a, it's just a skill they need to have, be able to do cutting them. That's one of the reasons why I did two weeks for a sort, even if it was a simple sort as in beginning or ending sounds of a word. One of the things that I did find that was happening is that my kids were losing their pieces so over the past so when you're five, six, and seven years old. That's just kind of how it goes. So what I did for that is that I would always make sure that there was a master copy of the word sort up on one of my bulletin boards or on the whiteboard so that if the kid did lose a piece and they couldn't find it, uh, they were always able to write it down on a separate piece of paper or a sticky note, and then that's how they would add that word back in. I also have all my kids write their numbers, their assigned number, on the back of all their words. So if you did find one on the back uh, or a missing piece on the floor, you could just look around and say, number two, who's number two? You know, I have your piece. But I've, I've always had them cut it. It really wasn't a big issue in my classroom, and putting the words up on the board in case they lost the piece was a really great way to combat losing pieces. And, 
cutting took a little bit of time, but now we're going to move quick with it. Um, we just, um, yeah, same thing, what we do differently though, is they each get a, when their, their sheets are all set out for them in the morning as they walk in, and so they do their agenda, they listen to announcements, and then they go, and I have them take, they each have a colored crayon, they just scribble on the back of the sheet, turn it over and cut it out, so they each know what the purple goes in the purple, or the orange, if they think they get mixed up, so they each have their own color and do it that way. So again, they don't usually get mixed up, but the odd case, I have a purple and blue purple, um, but it's quick and it's easy. I, I honestly don't have time to cut out their work for them. So, you know, you're busy prepping for the lesson, so it's a good skill for them to learn and, and they're fast at it. I don't even notice it now. Any good questions? Um, yeah, so also, I guess this is totally on. I use the spelling, so I do the 125 degrees to the term balance literacy as well. And so the words they wear are, are words that they get to practice as well. So I have their spelling, high frequency words, as well as their words they wear. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing. I, they, when they're doing their work and they practice their certain and feeling comfortable with it, when they go to their third work center, I really encourage them to practice their work so they would them in sentences, writing them on the whiteboard, whatever their third work center is, but they also have all of our words work or grade wall words, which are high frequency words for grade one and grade two, up on the word wall, and that's a really great great place for them to be practicing those words as well. They really enjoy making their own sorts from the word wall. Actually something we've been doing the past Week because it's a short week for us, so I really love making your own work for it. Oh, store the sort? Mm -hmm. store store the sort. Oh, store the sort. I actually have all of my sorts in file folder, very similar uh, to Darlene. Uh, I just have them in file folders, I have what book they're from, and then I just have them numbers and then I put the kids names on them based on what sort they're working on and then I have a sheet at the beginning of each file folder with the, my class that I've been checking off who's done what sort that way I'm not giving them a sort that they've already done. Mm -hmm. The kids? Oh, the kids sort? So they, oh, my kids sort in their daily five basket. I have a folder and they all have little baggies and they just go in the baggie, it sticks in the folder and it goes in their daily five baskets. I another co-worker at my school just puts it in their bin. Another teacher I know, they have um, the, just like a bin that they put them all in with their name on it. So whatever works best for you. I find my daily five baskets with their folder works really, really well with the baggies. That way if they lose it, it's not something that I'm upset about having to replace. Um, my students have their daily work notebook and inside the front cover I have an envelope that they put their, their word sorts in as well as letter tiles so they can make the words that in the word source. Uh, I use them both. I happen to have one of my students do a tank here. So I am a grade four teacher and I have all the different types of sorts at the very front. So when teacher forget how to do a certain sort, they can just check and then a baggie. And I'm already thinking that next year we've had to replace a few of these baggies. They do tip. Um, you can get those dollars for um, pencil um, little pockets with the zipper. They have the three uh, holes in them. So I'm thinking next year that's what I would do in here. I would put it in a pencil case inside the zoom tin. Um, I think that would work really, really well, actually. So I do the same format. I have word work you attend with uh, the block baggie stapled in the back, and that seems to be the best way. Um, and the to it's kind of their responsibility. If they need the word, then they can make a new one and they can find a friend and see which one they're missing. But that seems to be the best way. And then they keep their do it in their daily five bins. Can we just do the next question? Yeah, we're going to do the next question. Okay. Um, how many minutes in the daily five rotation? Well, our periods are 30. 31 minutes each. So we break that into one mini lesson for five to 10 minutes and then two periods of, or two rotations of daily three for us. So they're about 10 minutes each. 
Um, even for grade six, it's hard for them to stay focused for a whole lot longer than that. So it's nice to let them move and shuffle and change activities after that. Um, but we then also do let them pick two in a row if they wanted to just do reading for both or writing for both or word sorts for both. Um, I say what I've been doing is um, on Monday, it does take a little bit longer because you're passing out the sort. But even then, I would say 10 minutes. And while they're cutting, they're in their group. It's on the same sort. I'll go along and ask them, do you see what you're sorting today? Do you understand what you're having to sort? And so I can actually go from table to table, six tables, probably in about on the Monday in 15 minutes, and they understand their sort. And then the remainder of that time, I do my guided reading group at my new table and they do their book club. And then on Tuesday, it's like a five minute sort again, like an individual sort. Um, and they, they do that for five minutes and they go into their literacy center. So that's how I'm doing it. Okay. Um, yeah. So with grade ones and twos, at the beginning of the year, we were they were quite short because we were so little and we couldn't focus for longer than five to ten minutes. At this point during the year, because they're enjoying the sort so much, we've actually been able to work about ten to fifteen minutes. But it really depends on you know the weather and how focused they are that 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 day. I do always make sure that for my word work centers when they're doing their word sort, they have other activities to do. So if they do finish their word sort and they're feeling pretty confident and they don't really want to do that part of it anymore, the physical sort itself, then they can go ahead and take magnet letters or they can take uh, the bananagrams or they can use the chalkboard or the whiteboard. Uh, I also have ABC order pages where they have to put their word sort words into alphabetical order. Um, they have a, have a sheet with a giant rainbow on it where they have to write all their words into, you know, rainbow writing. And so I just try and provide them with as many options as possible. Uh, it, it hasn't really been too much of a problem making sure that they're staying focused. We, we spent a lot of time practicing, but having all those extra options during those work has really been helpful for the kids. Any suggestions for how to supply them in the reader's workshop in order? I think that we can do words your way in the first 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then get into your reader's workshop. How are you? Like, I'm doing book clubs and guided reading, but I would like to do more of a reader's workshop. I do my read aloud with the novel after lunch. So, my novel study is more of a read aloud listening comprehension uh, activity. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the reader's workshop, how you would incorporate that after your um, words go away. And still do the guided reading. Still do the book club. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, so uh, on the topic of spending 20 minutes on word work, I we don't not in one shot, um, especially in grade six. Like once they've learned the sort, it really takes five minutes for them to do their sort, write it down, and they can be on to something else. So um, we don't really cut out the words during the announcements in the morning, and when we cut them out, take a look at them and sort them out. Uh, for a while before Christmas, I was having a little routine where they would do a word sort right when they came back from lunch. So, and that would just be five minutes, so it was written down, move on to the next thing. So, I think you can kind of fit it in anywhere. Uh, and then there's another question about in grade six um, do we let them do two rounds of reading, two rounds of writing if they wanted to? Um, we do. We have one of them they have to meet for the week. So, they can't just do two blocks of writing every day, all week, and then do no reading or vice versa. Um, so, we have minimums that they have to hit. We have a chart in uh, our class where when they sign up for what rounds they're going to do that day, they indicate what rounds they've chosen. So, on a given day, they might choose all reading, but then they know that's all their reading blocks for the week. And so then they need to choose writing the next day. So, it's giving that element of choice, but still making sure there's balance and all the activities are being done. And with the writing, we have writing assignments. 
and they'll have a due date on the writing assignment. So it's up to them to make sure they're choosing enough writing blocks to get their assignment done. I don't know for sure. Um, so with the email, could we do it just with through me and then and then yeah. we'll have a main person to contact you? Yeah. Sounds great. We're just waiting for the site. Okay, um, so it seems like that's answering most people's questions, but now that you have Heather's email, just let her know if you have any more questions, or as you get going, if you have more questions, let her know, and she'll pass them on to us. Um, so I guess hopefully you are starting to consider using this program in your classroom. Uh, if you've done any research about spelling programs, you'll find that this is one of the best um, pedagogically sound practices because giving um, a random list of words and asking students to memorize them isn't super meaningful for them, but understanding patterns in words and uh, especially once they get to derivational relations, learning about where words come from and what, what different parts of words mean, um, it's a lot more meaningful and effective in terms of what we found at least. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, let us know and hopefully you found this helpful. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>